Something times two doesn't give you an odd. That's the, that's the problem. That's why we have to learn this method as well. So if we did it the other way, we could write this as 36. And instead of x to the sixth, what I'd do is write this as x squared, x squared, x squared. And you'll see that I can still take the square root there. The square root of 36 is still 6. Square root of x squared, square root of x squared, square root of x squared. Notice how this square root, because I can separate it like that, every one of those twos is going to be crossed out. The square root's going to undo every one of those squares. And again, how many x's do I have left over? Three. So I'm going to have x to the third. Either way, we, we do that, we're fine. How many people feel okay with that so far? Good deal. Good deal. Try a couple of these on your own, all right? So they don't take too long. Let's work on those. So first two, just some numbers, taking some square roots of those if you can. Last one, they have a variable in there. Use one of those two methods. You don't show me both, just use one of them. I don't care which one, this one. Ultimately, we're going to be doing this or this when we see these problems, most likely, from here on out. So first one, square root of negative 81, how much is that? No solution. No, not no solution. No. Yeah, we will have a solution on this in section 10.7 for sure. But right now, we are dealing with real numbers. We have no real solution. Why no real solution? What, what's the matter there? Yeah, we, don't, we know that a number times itself cannot give us a negative. So if the radicand is negative inside of a square root, we can't do it. Not in the real numbers, at least. Negative square root of 121, how much is that, folks? Yeah, that's exactly right. And 16x to the 8. We're going to do this process over here, one of these processes. So we know the square root of 16 is how much? Okay, that's not bad. The square root of x to the 8, we have to write this a certain way. Either you're going to write this as 16, x to the something raised to the second power. We're choosing the second power because we know a square root and a square are inverse operations. That allows us to simplify that. Not your head with me on that. So we're choosing the second power because it's a square root. What well, has to go in here to make that true? So we do square root of 16 is 4. Square root of x to the 4th to the 2nd, that's going to simplify out of our expression. We're going to get x to the 4th left over. Raise your hand if you got that. Good. If you want to do it the other way, that's fine. If you want to do it the other way, that's fine. What we're going to do is still write this as 16. Except instead of x to the 8, we have to write this as a whole bunch of square terms. So x squared, x squared, x squared, x squared. That still makes x to the 8. And everywhere we see that square, underneath that square root, that's going to simplify our expression. Again, because we could separate this as square root of x squared and square root of x squared over and over again. So still we get square root of 16 is 4. We have x, 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 that's x to the 4th. Either way we do that, we get the same answer. Hey, by the way, let's, let's do a little practice on this. What's the square root of 81? Nine. How about the square root of 64? 25. 49. 30. Uh -huh. Does it exist? Yeah. Okay. So it's not just that there's only like 10 square roots for the first 100 numbers, right? I mean, is it, is it just that you take square root of 1 and 4 and 9 and 16 and 25 and nothing else? No, no, no. 
It's just that when you take the square root of those numbers, you're able to give me a whole number, which is why you're able to do it quickly, right? You go with the square root of 25, you go 5. The square root of 49, 7. The square root of 30. I have no idea. I don't know. Why? Because it's not, what is that number known as? Where it's 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64. What are those numbers? What are those? Well, why? Why do those ones work? Think about it. Why do those numbers work? Okay, what's that known as in mathematics when you multiply a number by itself and it gives you something? Say it again. No, not a prime number. A prime number would be a number where only one and the number itself divides it. So the number's one. Can you take the square root of one? Yeah. Sure, it's one, yeah. What's the next number you can take the square root of and it's a whole number? Four. Yeah, not two, right? The square root of two is, oh, I don't know. How about three? I don't know. How about four? Two. Two, great, okay. okay. <laughs> What's the next number you can take the square root of easily? Five? No. Six? No. Seven? Eight? Nine? Yeah. What's the next one after that? Sure. What's the next one after that? Yeah, then 36, then 49, then 64. How are we getting these numbers? How are you determining that? Are you just guessing and checking, or is there an easier way? By the way, what's the square root of 1? One? Square root of 4. Square root of 9. 4, 4, 5. Okay, what are those numbers? How are you getting those numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? How are you getting those numbers? Multiplying them together. Okay, in other words, instead of just multiplying them together, how else could I say that? Squaring it. These numbers are called perfect squares. Have you never heard of that before? A perfect square is a number that is an integer times itself. Perfect squares. So a perfect square, that's that number where you take a number times itself, you get one of those, right? You get 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on, and so on, and so on, forever. Those are also the numbers where I can take the square roots of easily, and it gives me a whole number answer. And the reason why is because we know that a perfect square is a number times itself, right? So if I'm undoing that, it's going to give me that number back again. And a square root and a square are inverse operations. So these are the only numbers that you can take a square root of, and it gives you a whole number answer. If you don't have a perfect square, such as when I said, what's well, a square root of 30, and you all went, I don't know. Somewhere between 5 and 6, probably. Between 25 and 36, right? So somewhere between 5 and 6. But I don't know exactly how much it is. And that's because it's an irrational number. So every time you take the square root of a number that is not a perfect square, you're going to get an irrational number. That's a number that is, is represented by a decimal that's not ending and not repeating. If you take the square root of a number that is not a perfect square, the result will be irrational. Let's look at the square root of 30. Firstly, I, I said that this, this number is between 5 and 6. And how did I know that? Well, let's, let's look at that. Can you, do you know the square root of 25? Do you know the square root of 36? If this is between 25 and 36, then we know that the square root of that number has to be between 5 and 6. Does that make sense to you? So it's kind of squeezing that. It's squeezing it between two bookends. It's saying, well, 
this one equals 5, this one equals 6. If I have something between there, the answer has to be between 5 and 6. And that's the way that works. So I know this is somewhere between 5 and 6, but I don't know exactly how much it is. There's methods to do this, like by hand, to find out exactly how much a square root of 30 is to whatever decimal place you want. But it's very hard to do. And we have these nice little things called calculators, which do it for us. Take out your calculator if you have one. Square roots can be found on your calculators. Now, i got to warn you that when you find a number on your calculator that's a square root, it's giving you like the first 10 or 12 digits. That's not everything. This number will go on literally forever. It does not end. It doesn't repeat. You cannot represent it as a fraction. That's what irrational means. Rational means fraction. Irrational means cannot be represented as a fraction. So this thing doesn't end. It goes on to millions and millions and millions of digits long. Okay? It's, a, it's a, not a huge number. It's only between five and six, but the, the decimals go on forever. So here's how you find your calculator. The first thing I need, to, need you to do, find the square root button. It looks like that. It might be a second or a shift button. So find that on your calculator uh, if you have a calculator. If you don't have a calculator, look at someone who has a calculator right now. You need to be seeing a calculator, okay? So if you don't have one, share. <laughs> find your square root, and what I want you to do is press your square root button. Press your square root button right now. If the, if, when you press your square root button, if it came up and you have now a square root on your screen, that's great. If you are one of those people, raise your hand. If you press the square root button, you have a square root on the screen. Okay, you people are going to press a square root first, then your number, and then press equals. Okay, that's what you people are going to do. So you press your square root, square root will pop up, then you press your number, pressing 30 right now, and then press equals, you should get five point something. Do you guys have that, if that was you? Okay. The other people, if you press your square root and then it still popped up zero, how many people, if you're one of two cases. Okay, so if you press that and it popped up zero, what you have to do is press your number first and then press your square root. So press zero and then press, uh, it's probably a second button or shift button, and then your square root, and you should get the five point something on that. In either case, are you, did you guys get that? Okay, how many people have a calculator? Raise your hand. And how many of those people were able to find the number? Okay, good. That's everybody. That's fantastic. So, can you tell me to the third decimal place, what is square root of 30? 5.477. 7, 7, what? 2, 2, Okay, so we do need to round appropriately. So, if I say third decimal place, I mean 5.77. 7. If that number is a 2, then we leave that number alone. If this was 5 or more, then we would have moved that to an 8, yeah? Okay, so round that appropriately. Let's try one more for me. Let's do the square root of 45. Before you do this on your calculator, I want you, unless you've already done it, I want you to think of what number this is between. What number that is between. Why 6 and 7? Perfect. Yeah. This is between those two, two values, 36 and 49. Square root of 36 is 6, 49 is 7, therefore it has to be there. Very good. How much is that? Uh, not exactly, because we are approximating. By the way, that's what that squiggly equals means. It means it's not exact, because we're rounding, we're approximating here. How much is that? 6.7. 6. 6.7. 6. what? 7.09. 7.09, all right. I believe it. 6.8. Hey, I just write what you guys say, all right? That's, that's what my job is. That's it. How many of you feel okay finding this on the calculator? Good, good deal. You know, we've covered square roots. Do you feel okay about square roots? At this point, you should be able to find the square root of any.